Aloha, everyone. Welcome to Tune in Tiki. I'm Christina, also known as Jersey Pineapple. Aloha, I'm Kelly. And we want to talk to you guys about an event we went to last week. We went to the new Don the Beachcomber, the first one that's opened for 23 restaurants. Yeah, it was super exciting. We were super lucky to be there during the opening, and it was a great time. So we're just going to talk about our experience there. Um, We had some disaster knots pick us up to take us two hours to the event. Um, We all got dressed up and everything. Um, The parking situation was pretty easy. Like, we just, they have valet parking there, which was cool, especially if you're wearing fancy shoes you know and it was a bit cold so valet was much appreciated they just bring you right to the door and then take your car away and then when we walked in they had a big peacock chair with the sign and everything which was awesome photo shoot kind of a area um and we walked in and it was so nice like everything is so consistent you first walk in and there's like a little shopping area with all their merchandise and if you know you're into tiki we all love all the merchandise. Yeah, I was very surprised when we first got there at how decorated this place actually is. I mean, it is decorated like floor to ceiling. And from some of the preview pictures that I saw, I thought it was going to be a little more sparse. I think I was only seeing like the front lobby area, which even now is decorated very beautifully. But I mean, the place is packed full of decor. There's just so much to look at. Yeah, I was really surprised as well, because sometimes when places open, it's like, okay, a couple little totems and things, and, you know, they might have, you know, a Mai Tai glass or something, but this was like, you walked in and you just thought this place, it was like discovering a new tiki bar that you've never been to, that you're like, wait, where is this place? Yeah, it was very immersive, and it did feel like it had been there longer. It didn't feel like this was their first day being open. And I will say the soundtrack, too, was pretty much on point. Like, um, you know, a lot of times people would just use Trader Sam's soundtrack on Spotify or on Apple or something. And I just you hear the same music all the time. But if you're into like Exotica or any kind of like Tiki-ish music, um, the soundtrack was pretty much on point. Because it was a lot of music that I currently always, you know, listen to the Manicuras and all that fun stuff. So Definitely great work with the soundtrack as well. It was super immersive. I really thought it was at like a Disney, you know, themed tiki bar with how amazing of a job they did for it. Yeah, the music was great. You could tell it was like very curated specifically for Don the Beachcomber. It was just very immersive all around. And then let's talk about the drinks. So we first got there and we um, our table wasn't quite ready yet, which we were totally fine with. There's some space at the bar. Um, the place was packed and it was really nice because it wasn't just, um, you know, a crazy, everybody dressed to the nines tiki it was, um, a good mix of people that were like hotel guests that were not into tiki that were kind of just like, Oh, asking us questions about things. Cause we were all dressed up. Um, and then we got to the bar. Um, first we asked the bartender to take some, or one of the servers to take some photos for us. Yeah. He really went above and beyond. Like, (laughs) you know how, when you normally ask a bartender to take a photo, they just snap a quick one and walk away. This man got so into it. His hospitality was just top notch. He made sure that we got the right angles. He really paid attention to what we were asking for. And I just felt like the customer service right off the bat was great. Yeah, we were... We were just so amazed with the level of customer service. Even the bartender that we had at first, um, I always order a Mai Tai to start. Um, Which drink did you get to start? Um, I believe my first drink was the Coconut Chi-Chi. Is that what I ordered first? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I tried Christina's Mai Tai, which I think was a good indication that all of the drinks were going to be amazing because it was just perfect as you would expect it to be. And anyone who knows me knows that I always order a Mai Tai at any bar because I feel like that's your control. Like if you, if the yeah. Mai Tai is good, like, you know, okay, like I'll order You can order trust a this experience. <laughs> yeah. And the Mai Tai was on point. It was so good. Um, and then the bartender was talking about like some other secret menu or like another menu that they had on a different 
paper, which had even more exciting cocktails. But then he said my favorite word, which is a pearl diver. And I was just so excited. I'm always excited when I go to a place and they have a pearl diver because I know it's not It's kind of rare to find, yeah. Yeah, it's certainly rare. Or it's just made differently. It doesn't use like that gardenia mix that everybody knows and loves. Um, So I was so excited about that. Um, And then, yeah, so then, you know, a little bit of excitement at the bar for sure. And the one thing I noticed was some of the wood carvings and, and things in the place were things that we recognize. Like we recognize who carved them or who made them and we were just so excited to see that because Kelly and I are both Whitco fans and um, just seeing certain carvings and things. And uh, we got to see Patrick. He was there from Monkey Skull and he was telling us, pointing things out. The backlighting of the bar too was just so nice, like so consistent, but nothing was like in your face bright. Like I never felt like, oh my gosh, some of the lighting is like I'm looking into the sun, but it was just, just the ambiance, like everything in the place was so awesome. So then they directed us to our table and we were checking out the menu. Yeah, I, agreeing with Christina, there were a lot of like subtle details. It wasn't super bright in your face, but the lighting scheme, the music, everything all together was just, it created the experience. And you could tell that they really dove into the tiki community when they got their decor. It definitely wasn't like mass produced, like you see some chain bars opening up and it's, you don't recognize the artist. It's just something that they pulled off their CNC machine or whatever, but we actually recognized a lot. Like, I feel like we walked through and we were like, oh, my friend made this, or we knew someone that we had met at Hookie Lao that might've made this. Like it was just a bunch of tiki people that were involved in the creation. So that was cool. And then, yeah, once we got to our table, they brought us the food menu, which was pretty exciting as well. And we got shrimp, right? And the shrimp were like a peel and eat kind of a shrimp, but they were flavored so nicely. Like it yeah. wasn't like super spicy, but it was, they were, they're really good. So I'm not sure what their full menu is. We were there at like a soft opening. So there were certain things that we could select and that was the appetizer that we got and it was delicious. And then I got the Puster's Rum Blue Label Fish and Chips. <laughs> Which was so good. Um, We always talk about Pusser's Rum and how, you know, the copyrighted stuff. So that was definitely something that we saw and pointed out and was honestly exciting because it was just something that is using like a popular tiki, you know, rum infused into the food. And I was excited to see that because it's like, you know, we're always crafting cocktails and using different types of rum and you know Hamilton and everything and seeing a popular rum be infused into the food was even more exciting because it's like okay the people that made this food menu it wasn't just like here's some dumplings and and that's about it and a flatbread or whatever it's just like okay we really took the time to think about how we're going to make this menu and like Kelly was saying It was a limited menu and we can't wait to go back and really just try the full menu, but just that it was so exciting and the food was so good. And also if you have a lot of dietary restrictions, they really thought about that. It's not just, oh, you know, if you're a vegetarian, pescatarian, or if you only eat certain things that it, oh, we don't have anything for you. It was, you can tell that it was really curated for everybody. Um, One of the things I noticed on the drink menu too is, talking about things curated for everyone. Um, Not everybody drinks tiki cocktails. And I did like that they had a specific menu that just kind of had an old fashioned and then it kind of rum old fashioned. It had a paper plane if you like bourbon cocktails. So I was excited about that because it was something was just, you know, for everyone, not just the tiki files and Yeah, the menu definitely felt very thoughtful. And it is somewhere that you could bring anyone like I could bring my mom there, she might not know about tiki cocktails, I just feel like there's something that everyone can find on that menu that they're going to enjoy. And like Christina was saying, they did have several different menus, they have their main menu, and then there's a secret menu, there's like a coffee grog menu. So You can definitely ask for different styles if you're not seeing what you want. And the bartenders were super knowledgeable. So I feel like even if you don't see something you liked on that menu, I'm sure they'd be happy to make it. They all seem to really know what they were talking about and use fresh ingredients. And 
Really? I feel like the bar staff was amazing, especially for their first night working together. Like they didn't seem to have any problems just flowing right into it. And um, let's talk about that drink that I ordered at the table because <laughs> ever since the Hukilau and we had uh, this amazing missionary's downfall at the Hukilau that to this day people still talk about. And I'm pretty sure that was a Marie King missionary sound fall at the Hookie Lao. So I was so excited to order a missionary sound fall. Kelly, I don't know if ever has ever had a missionary sound fall, but no one has had a missionary sound fall like this one. I had had the drink before, but not that I enjoyed. <laughs> I definitely had not had one like this. I thought it was absolutely delicious and I was pleasantly surprised. It was just so fluffy and it so minty and it was just smooth and it I mean, that might have been my favorite drink of the entire night. And Yeah. And we had the hot buttered rum, which was really good too, and the coffee grog. But the Missionary's Downfall, I don't know what kind of magic they put in it, but it was so good. I think fluffy is a good way to describe it. It was more of a texture thing. I mean, the taste obviously was immaculate, but the texture was just so different than a normal cocktail. It was so good. And it was so white. Like if you're, it's like, you know, it's a hot day at, you know, Madeira Beach and you're just hanging out. And they also have a patio area too, which we did get to check out as well. But that drink, I'm telling you, if if you go to Don the Beachcomber, do not skip on the Missionary's Downfall. Make sure you order that cocktail. It's so good. Um, I mean, you should probably just order everything because all of the drinks were amazing. Maybe make a few different trips. Maybe not try to fit it all in in one, but... Yeah, the patio area was cool also. There was really nobody sitting out there because I think everyone that came that night was so excited to just be immersed in the experience and to be inside with everyone else. But the patio was quite nice. I would love to sit out there on a sunny day. Like It's in a good area. It's very decorated out there. It was cool. And then um, we ordered a coffee grog, which also had a gardenia mix in it as well. And that was so good. I would drink that if I could drink rum in my coffee every morning, I would drink that drink. That would be the one that I would choose yeah. when I don't have to work anymore. Maybe that's how I would drink my coffee, but I it would was have so one good. right now. Yeah, that one yeah. was delicious. And especially as like an after dinner kind of cocktail, the coffee grog was really good. So if you haven't if you go and you, you need to ask for that little square menu that has these other uh drinks on it, because it, it was so good. And you got the hot buttered rum. Yes, the hot buttered rum was delicious. And for food, they did have a few different options. Um, like I said, I don't know what their full menu is. I'm super excited to go back and try that. But we got a burger with blue cheese and bacon that I would say was really, really delicious. Um, do you know what else other people at our table ordered? Or The chicken skewers, right? Oh, yeah. There was like a Thai chicken skewers. Those were very good. Um, everything I tried was good. I mean, I would definitely go eat there right now if we could. I know. It's a bit of a drive, but I mean, if you're hungry, we can go. <laughs> I can't wait till there's one that's local so we can just be like, let's go. We're done fil- We're done, done filming, done recording. Let's go to Don the Beachcombers. But yeah, so definitely check it out. That's our review of it for Tuna Tiki. So We had an amazing time, so let us know what you think. Um, Yeah, let us know on social media what you think as well. Uh, Thanks for listening, everybody. All righty, guys. I think that's the sound of our Mai Tais getting low. What do you think? Yeah, it's either time to make some more Mai Tais or maybe hit up our local tiki bar. Ooh. All right. Well, make sure that you subscribe to our Patreon. It's the 1944 Society. If you know, you know, 1944. And you can also follow along with us on Instagram. We have a TikTok and beyond. So wherever you find us, make sure you hit the subscribe button. (laughs) Bye for now.